The Islamic Center of Tennessee presents We started speaking about the best of the best the best of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the man Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu said that one night of Abu Bakr is better than when they try to compare Abu Bakr and Umar some companions said that uh, Umar was better than Abu Bakr Umar said that Laylatun, one night of Abu Bakr is better than Umar and his family so it shows us the importance of the man even said Umar Siddiq radiallahu anhu Umar Khattab radiallahu anhu he said about him he said that if the Iman of Abu Bakr was measured was placed in a scale and the Iman of the entire Ummah including the companions and all of us put to the other side said Lawazina Iman Abu Bakr the Iman of Abu Bakr was overweight the Iman of the entire Ummah shows us the the, the, the greatness of Abu Bakr Siddiq We started speaking about him. We spoke about the fadail, the virtue of Abu Bakr Siddiq, and we made one halaqa about it. Today's part two. Usually we're making one halaqa about each companion, but when we started speaking about Abu Bakr Siddiq, I found out it was a bahr la sahil an ocean, and there is no end for it. The greatness of Abu Bakr Siddiq but I will try to make it up to part three. I will try my best to summarize it, although it's very difficult to do it because we're talking about the best of best. They narrate that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu never prostrated, never made a sujood to Sanam. That it was well known that the people used to worship idols and, and all that. Abu Bakr never did that. It was reported that, that he said in the gather of the companions that he never prostrated to a Sanam. He said that when I grow up, when I reach the age of puberty, my father took me to the place where the idols were there so that he told me that He said, these are your gods who are well respected, the great great of your gods. So you need to worship them from now. He said that when he left me alone, I tried to speak to them. They were not responding to me. I tried to ask them, tell them I am hungry. He said, I am hungry. I'm hungry, feed me. He's talking to the idols. Then they don't respond. He said, I said, I'm naked. I need some clothes. Give me some clothes. They do not respond to him. And he said, I throw stone on them. And he fall down to his face. And I said, what God you are. Even you cannot defend yourself from me. So what type of God? Instead of me defending me, forget about you defending me. You cannot even defend yourself. So you are false God. And he left him. After that also, what he did was helping the people who were weak in Mecca. That the, after the Messenger of Allah started preaching the da'wah, the people who accepted Islam, there were two categories. Some people, they were strong. They have a tribe who were behind them, supported them, that no one could harm them. And there were some people that, like Bilal ibn Rabah, anh, like Ammar ibn Yasir, they were weak people. They were not armed in another way. They didn't have a tribe behind them. So those people were given hard time. Among them the story of Bilal ibn Rabah and he was given a hard time. Umayyah when he figured out that, uh, na, na, that uh, Bilal ibn Rabah, Umayyah ibn Khalaf was the owner of Bilal and he killed him by the way. He killed him in the battle of Badr. Uh, Bilal killed him. He said that when he figured out that Bilal became a Muslim, he started threatening him. Tell, tell him that I'm going to do that to you, that to you. And sometimes he tries to tell him I'm going to give you that and give you that. Leave Islam, leave Muhammad. But Bilal always was refusing to, to uh, give up the message of Islam that he had just found. So Umayyah get angry from that. And he decided that he will torture him a lot. He took him to the Lahirat al-Shams. And the sun was in the middle, very hot day. And he put him in the desert. Desert, the sand, sand at the time is very hot. If you can't put your back in your, your feet, you can't put it there. So he put him to his back. And he put a huge stone a huge stone, he, he, even he couldn't carry it. He called a couple people to carry that and to put on the chest of Bilal radiallahu anhu. He was doing that and he was saying to him that, and he, he tied him with his, with his toe and he was saying that you will be in this situation until you die or takfura bi Muhammad or you disbelieve Muhammad and you worship again Allah and Uzza, the false idols. And Bilal was saying, Ahadun Ahad. One, one God. I only worship one God, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's one. Because he could not even dare speak, say that. No, he couldn't talk because of the situation that he was in, the heat and the stone that were on his chest. He could not 
handle it. So he was in that situation until Abu Bakr came to the location, to the scene. And he said to him, why don't you fear Allah for this miskeen guy? You want him to die? Why are you doing this to, to him? He said that he, he, was, he gave up, Maya anyway, he gave up that this man is not going back from his religion. He said that you are the one who corrupted his mind. And if you want to save him, save him. He said that I do that. This, there's two different narrations. One narration says that Abu Bakr Siddiq bought Bilal from him. He gave him money. Another narration said that Abu Bakr had a, another slave who, who was strong again, but he was not a Muslim. He was uh, believing the same message of Quraysh. He was worshipping idols. So he said, why don't we switch with that? And they switched the two slaves. And Allah Alam. Either he bought it or he, he replaced him with another slave. After as soon as he became a belonging to him, he freed him. And he make him free for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Bilal got his freedom. When Quraysh figured out that many of the companions now left Mecca and he find out, they found out that these people are residing in Medina this time and they are getting support, they felt threatened. They said that this, these people now, they got people who support them, defending them. So this is not good for us. So they decided to meet and they met in the Darul Nadwa, a place called Darul Nadwa, to make a decision of what they're going to do about this. Because Muhammad is getting out of hand now, their, their mentality is getting out of hand and he's going to Medina and now he's getting support. One day they're going to come back and attack us, so we have to get rid of them now. So they decided that, since Muhammad is in Mecca, that let us kill Muhammad. And they said that in order to kill Muhammad, we don't want Banu Hashim, the family of Muhammad وسلم, to give us hard time. So let us get every in a tribe one man. Every small tribe they get one man. We're gonna give them a sword and they're all gonna go to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they're gonna strike him all one time. So that when his family comes out and say that who killed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they won't be able to fight with every tribe, then they will take a deer and the story will end that way. So that's the plan they did it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan was always better and faster. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him to migrate from, from, uh, from Mecca to go to Medina. Aisha narrates says that. Aisha said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, always used to come to us every day. Every day he used to come. Either sometimes comes in the morning, sometimes comes in the afternoon, but every day he used to come to our house. At the time Aisha was very young. He said that she used to come to us all the time. So this day when the Messenger of Allah was given a permission to migrate to Medina, he came in a time that he usually not come, in a, in a hot time, like at the Duhr time, very hot. That he came and the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came in while Abu Bakr was in his bed. He sat next to Abu Bakr and he said that, Abu Bakr said that, this time you never came, O Messenger of Allah, you must come for an important matter. Then the, then the uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to Abu Bakr, can you take these people away from the room? And at the time, Aisha and Asma was in the room with Abu Bakr. He said, take them away. This is a very secret, top secret. Then Abu Bakr said, these are my family. I trust them. Don't worry about them. O Messenger of Allah, why you came? Then he said that I have been given a permission. I have been given a permission. Then the, when he said that, that the Messenger of Allah, Abu Bakr said, As-suhbatu ya Rasulullah. I want to be a companion with you. Can I be, please, a companion? Can I accompany you through the hijrah he said yes as-suhbatu ya abu bakr he said yes you are my companion we'll go together she said aisha says that that i have never knew that a person could cry out of joy and happiness until i saw that day my father crying out of joy and happiness because of the accompanying the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sadiq radiyallahu anhu came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told him that let us go Let's come out. Let the people know about us. Let's, let's, let's not hide anymore. He insisted. They say that Abu Bakr Siddiq insisted until the Prophet ﷺ accepted from him. So Abu Bakr Siddiq, he was the one who was leading. And he stood up making khutbah in, 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 the, in the Mecca, in the Kaaba. And he was telling the people about Islam, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people of Quraysh jumped on him because he was the one who was talking. There was a, an evil man that even jumped on Abu Bakr Siddiq and he hit him in his face his eye until the, the blood covered the face of Bakr Siddiq of the Adha'an. And finally he was about to kill him but his tribe Banu Tame 
rushed and they, they moved him away. The man was sitting. This man was a very strong man. Abu Bakr, you know that his khuluq, he was is a man, a skinny man, his, his skinny face. He was not that strong man when it comes to the physical. So that when they removed him away, his tribe took him, Abu Bakr. They carried him to his house. When they took him to his house, they waited until he recovered and they went to the man. They told him, by Allah, if Abu Bakr dies, we're going to kill you. They weren't the man. When they staying home, Abu Bakr a little bit felt better and he started speaking. He was not talking before that. And they were ready to go fight his tribe, Banu Tain. They were ready to go fight and kill that man who attacked Abu Bakr Siddiq. Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he opened his eyes, first thing that he said is, Mada fa'ala Rasulullah. What happened to the Messenger of Allah? Is he doing okay? The Banu Tain, they said that we have done this all. We fought. We wanted to kill somebody for you. And you are still talking about the man. You were in trouble because of him. They left him. They said that his mother take care of him, this man. He, he, they little bit get upset with him and they left his mother she wanted to feed him at the time he would come and eat and drink because he was very sick that he said no until I know about the Prophet because they were with the Prophet and, and uh, they were in a camp at the time he does not know whether they also hurt the Prophet or not but he was not hurt because he was not the one who was talking and that he said that I want to know until he sent his mother to one of the companions the female companions he said go and ask so and so and ask her What's the messenger of Allah doing? Is he doing great? He didn't want to eat until he figured out that. His mother went to that woman, the lady. She did not trust this, the Abu Bakr's mother. Why? Because at the time, she was not Umul Khair. And she was not a Muslim. So she didn't want to say anything. She said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you... She, she was afraid in another way. But she said, if you want to come with you to see Abu Bakr, I can see him. But I don't know, Muhammad, and what you're talking about. Then they came back to Abu Bakr and he asked, she, he said that I didn't want to say this into your mother because I don't, I'm not sure that how and, and, uh, your mother is with Quraysh or with us. So she didn't want the secret of her Islam also to be leaked because she's going to get hurt. But she said that Abu Bakr uh, is doing great and he's fine and he's in uh, Artam and Artam's house, one of the companions, the place that they used to gather. Abu Bakr, his mother said, now eat and drink. He said, no, until I see the Prophet that I have to go to the Prophet Sallallahu They carried him to that house hiding. And when they went to that house, when he saw that then, uh, the Prophet Sallam, he got happy and he jumped on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and cried. And Prophet Sallam felt bad at the time and he, he, he cried a lot in that gap.